entity y and entity z execute a 12 year lease of a rail car with the following terms on january 1st 2016 the lease commencement date is 1st february 2016 entity y must pay entity z the first monthly rental payment of rupees 10000 upon the execution of the lease entity z will pay entity y rupees 50000 cash incentive to enter into the lease payable upon the lease execution Entity Y incurred rupees one thousand of initial direct cost, which are payable on first February twenty sixteen. Entity Y calculated the initial li lease liability as the present value of the lease payments discounted using its incremental borrowing rate, because the rate implicit in the lease could not be readily determined. The initial lease liability is rupees eight lakh fifty thousand. How would the lessee company measure and record the ROU as it? So there are two entities which are entering into a 12 year lease okay and it is 1st january 2016 and then they say the lease commencement date is 1st february 2016 so this seems to be the inception date while 1st february 16 seems to be the commencement date remember all the calculations relating to the lease occur only from the commencement date so January 1st, 2016, that's the time when you will simply analyze whether the contract contains a lease or not. Right. So on 1st January 2016, I will analyze the entire contract and I will come to the conclusion that there is a lease. But I will not record any accounting entry on 1st January 2016. Accounting entries will be recorded only from the commencement date of the lease. Commencement date is the date on which the lesser makes the asset available to the lessee. So that's happening on 1st February 2016. Entity Y must pay Entity Z the first monthly rental payment of rupees 10,000 upon the execution of the lease. So on 1st February 2016 itself, we will have to pay 10,000. Entity Z will pay Entity Y rupees 50,000 of cash incentive. So this is an incentive that we are receiving from the lesser. Entity Y incurred rupees 1000 of initial direct cost. So initial direct cost we know will get capitalized, which are payable on 1st February 2016. Any payment that you are making before the commencement of the lease or at the time of the uh, commencement of the lease, we are supposed to capitalize those initial direct cost. And finally, they are saying that Entity Y calculated the initial lease liability as the present value of the lease payments discounted using its incremental borrowing rate we know that the lease payments are to be discounted the first choice is the discount uh, the first choice for the discount rate is the interest rate implicit in the lease but if that interest rate is not readily available then you should be using the incremental rate of borrowing of the lessee and that's what they are saying that the rate implicit in the lease could not be readily determined so the initial lease liability was calculated at the incremental borrowing rate. Here it is, the incremental borrowing rate. It's already calculated at 8,50,000. Question is, how would the lessee company measure and record the ROU asset? How shall you measure the ROU asset? Basically, we are supposed to calculate the cost of the ROU asset. Yes, I'll take you to the discussion of the cost of ROU asset over here. Yeah, let me clear it up a bit for you. Here it is. They are saying cost of the ROU asset is sum total of. We should take the initial measurement of the lease liability. This initial measurement of the lease liability is nothing but present value of lease payments which in the given question they have already calculated as 8,50,000 then they are saying payment to the lesser at or before the commencement of the lease I'll take you to the question also I'm talking about this 8,50,000 see this 8,50,000 which was given over here they are saying that it is nothing but the present value so they've already discounted and given to us so that's the reason I have taken 8,50,000 immediately then as a second item, they are saying payment to the lesser at or before the commencement of the lease. That also they have given. 
they are saying here, if you will see this para, they say that entity Y must pay entity Z the first monthly rental payment of rupees 10,000 upon the execution of the lease. So 10,000 is something that we are going to pay at the time of execution of the lease. So here I will consider 10,000. Then they are saying incentives received from the lesser at or before the commencement of the lease, right? Incentive information is there. Here it is. There is a cash incentive of 50,000 rupees, isn't it? So here they have given us 50,000. Then they are saying initial direct cost incurred by the lessee. Initial direct cost. Here it is, this para, entity Y incurred rupees 1000 of initial direct cost. So that they have given as 1000. So this item, it is given as 1000. And then they say initial estimate of cost of restoration or the dismantling of the ROU asset. No such information is given. See, lease liability is present value of lease payments. This is also payment to the lesser, so it should be added. This is incentive received, right? Incentive received will be deducted. Incentive received will be deducted, while the initial direct cost will be capitalized. So this sum total, that's what they say. Cost of ROU asset is the sum total. The sum total that we are going to get, that will become the cost of the ROU asset. It's pretty simple. Let's work it out. Determination of cost of ROU asset. determination of cost of ROU asset. Yeah, we start with initial lease liability. Initial lease liability, 8,50,000. We then say add. Payment to lesser on lease commencement on lease commencement ten thousand. Incentive from lesser. on lease commencement fifty thousand this is to be deducted initial direct cost one thousand take a total Eight lakh eleven thousand. Cost of ROU. If you are still writing, just pause the video here and complete it. So the measurement of the ROU asset is turning out to be 8,11,000. Question is, how shall we record it? In other words, what shall be the accounting entry? So we say, journal entry on 1st February 2016. 2016, right? Yes, 1st February 
See, this is the ROU asset, 8,11,000. So I will say ROU asset account debit, 8,11,000. After all, the cost of the ROU asset is 8,11,000. So naturally, the asset will be debited by 8,11,000. Now, this is the initial lease liability. Liability will have a credit balance. So I will say, to lease liability account to lease liability account 8 lakh 11 uh, sorry 8 lakh 50000 sorry lease liability is 50 so i will say here 8 lakh 50000 so 8 lakh 50 is also incorporated so rou asset at 8 lakh 11 and the liability at 8 lakh 50 now this 50,000, okay, this 50,000 is a cash incentive that I am receiving from the lesser. So I will say bank account debit 50,000, isn't it? Because this is a cash incentive that we are going to receive. So bank account debit 8,50. And this is a payment that we are making to the lesser. This is also a payment that we are making for the initial direct cost. Let us assume that we are incurring both of them and we are making the payment right now itself. Right. So there is nothing outstanding. We are making the payment right now itself. So we say to bank account. I have to pay 10,000 to the lesser. I have to pay 1,000 rupees for the initial direct cost. So that turns out to be 11,000. So this is the accounting entry that we will record so that we can incorporate the ROU asset in our books as well as the related lease liability. You can just pause the video here and complete it. It's the end of this question.